Today, we get to talk to Lana Weisenbaker. She is a Bible teacher and a mentor and just an amazing woman. So welcome, Lana. Thank you, dear. I'm glad to be here. I'm so honored that you would come. Um, I was thinking that as this season, we're really trying to talk about simplifying our walk with Jesus. Maybe Mm. sometimes we make it too complicated. Um, And I wanted to help our listeners kind of zero in to what's really important. So um, maybe my first question would be what that looks like for you. How have you been able to maybe simplify your relationship with Jesus, you know, over the years? Oh, yes. I'd love to talk about that. Um, You know, I grew up in a family that was a very happy family. I've always considered myself a person who was um, pretty pretty happy most yeah. of the time. And uh, life was going pretty much as I had expected it to through. went to college that I wanted to go to, and then I married, and we began to have a family. And I think inside I thought I was doing it really well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I expected that I knew how things were going to go. But I had this child that was going to be a great, um, well, just almost from the beginning, a great mm, challenge. Yeah. Uh, he was. He had a lot of gifts, and he was very um, determined to do what he wanted to do. And in the course of him growing up and deciding he was going to be a rock star, okay, <laughs> uh, that took him into some. Uh, situations that were very different than I had anticipated. And though we had always encouraged his music because in uh, from the time of, you know, sixth grade or so, fourth, fourth or fifth grade, he showed a real, uh, a real talent for, for different instruments. And we had always encouraged that, but now it was the bass guitar that was the most important (laughs) instrument and being a rock star was, was it. And so in, just as that went on, um, I I did begin to think, I don't really know about being a mother in this situation. Yeah. I really don't. This isn't going quite like I wanted it to. <laughs> and um, then when he was 16, uh, we realized that there was an element in his life that was very destructive, and that was alcohol. Oh, yeah. And so from that time on, uh, I knew I was out of my depth. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when the Lord was so good to me because he began to teach me about what real joy was. Wow. I had thought about if everything was going my way, yeah. you know, I could be very happy. Right. But, um, and the thing that he showed me almost immediately was that that's who Jesus was. He was just joy. He was oh, joy. Yes. And he had joy for me too. Okay. And so on those days when I felt like there was nothing I could do to control anything in my son's life, and I was so concerned about what, uh, oh, his decisions were going, were leading in a a direction I knew was very bad. Uh, But he thought we were just so completely out of it mm-hmm. that what could we do what right. could we know what could we understand yes. we just didn't get it that that was part of the scene of being a rock star uh, right and so uh we were sort of talking past each other entirely and um and that went on for from the time he was 16 until the time he was 30 Wow. I wanted it to be over with long before then. But I'm so grateful that the Lord showed me that, first of all, I had no control over this child. It, it was his life right. he was choosing. And I had to just sit back, and uh, I had to understand that my life wasn't going to go on hold either because oh, of that. Yes, because we tend to do that, right? We I do. Mean, we, we begin wow. to, everything revolves around this right. this one thing. Right. And I had, we had two other children. Mm-hmm. We had a life before us, and the Lord had things for me to do. Right. And, uh, and so one of the best gifts I ever received was that understanding that I could actually have joy in the middle of this wow. time that was also full of uh, anxiety and yeah. grief and, um, and just you know, being overwhelmed by sure. what I could not control. And so that allowed us to maintain 
uh, a relationship with him through all those years that were so chaotic in mm -hmm. his life. And um, he, we sometimes would not hear from him for a while right. because he, he knew we were not, would not be happy when he was letting alcohol destroy his life. Right. And so he went through a lot of jobs. He went through a lot of uh, relationships. And, uh, and he, but he would <clears throat> keep coming back and reigniting the relationship, you know, re getting it on, going again. Keeping it going. And, uh, and that was a great gift because on that day, when he did finally come to his senses and realize that he had made a terrible choice right. and wanted to change it, yeah. we were able, we didn't have to deal with any baggage of words said okay. that were hurtful, mm -hmm. uh, of, of ultimatums, you, you know, you can't come back into this house, and, you know, all of those things the Lord had given me the strength to do because of his joy. Wow. And, um, and I think that it not only was a gift to me, but it was also a gift to my son. Because, you know, it's a heavy burden if you think, oh, no, what I've done has ruined mother and daddy's sure. life. Okay. And, yeah. and that was, we did not live our life that oh, way. Because so many times we do put that guilt we on do. other people. Okay. We imagine that if we show them how much they've hurt us, yes. that that will make them come back. But in reality, that only lays okay. another burden on them. Right. And, uh, and so we kept going. We kept growing. Yeah. We kept doing what the Lord wanted us to do. And during those years, uh, I mean, there were so many times when there were really things that I could laugh at. Um, you know, it's not that yeah, I didn't cry yes. too, but what I learned was that joy and, and uh, sorrow and grief can sit right um, next to each other and right. just side by side. You go. So I remember one story particularly that I was... I was in charge of a retreat that had thousands of people coming to it. Okay. And it was in the big hotel downtown reunion uh, area. And so uh, I and my team had worked really hard for all of that. And on the day when it began, um, we, we went into the hotel and this young man was showing us up to our suite, which was very high up. And he was so excited to show us how beautiful everything was. And he goes over to the window and, and opens the curtains and says, and look what a view you have of the city. Right across the, the way is Sterrett Justice Center, which is the jail, the county oh. jail. And my son was in it right then. I knew it. Oh. And I, it was just... I almost burst out laughing right then, but when he left, my when I turned to my team, who of course knew, yeah. I said, "Isn't this special? Perhaps I can wave at him in the jail." Oh. You know? And I'm thankful to the Lord for reminding me that yeah. yes, I had something important to do. Um, my life was going on, and this this the absolute hilarity to me um. of us being. You know, here I am at a at a ladies uh, what was it? it was a late, men's and ladies retreat, and there he is in jail for what he has done. And wow. Here we are, uh, you know, leading very really different lives. Yes. So I'm grateful to the Lord for giving me that kind of joy and right. reminding me again and again that um, whatever the circumstances are in my life. Uh, the joy doesn't depend on that right. at all. Yeah, and uh, and and that's and that's a truth that made me strong. Right. How can people practically do that? So it, I mean, it sounds like you kind of. I'm sure you and Jesus kind of had to work through it. It didn't just happen. Uh, yeah. Yes. But what what did what did that look like? You trying to seek joy in pain and disappointment yes. and. Yes. Well, you know, I did begin very deliberately to okay. look at uh, scripture and just um, try to find the thing. And one of the most amazing things to me was to, to realize how much uh, joy was God's idea. And even in places in scripture where it's all about law right. and, uh, and very dry seeming, I, I, because I was reading and looking for it, I kept seeing joy there. That God uh -huh. said, "I want you to, I want you to come and celebrate this feast with joy," 
And I want you to do this task I've given you. I want you to do it with great rejoicing. Oh. And so it, I kept realizing that God was teaching his people and teaching me that even though there were things I was supposed to do, right. uh, that I could do them with joy. And that was his intention for me. And and found the wonderful verse in Zephaniah where he's singing a song of joy over yes. me. And that made me um, just determined that I was going to not lose the wonder of what he had given me just because I had this other reality right. in my life. And so I would encourage anybody that no matter what's going on in your life, begin to look for and savor the good things that are there too. Oh, yes. And because we miss them right. when we're so focused on our sadness and our sorrow. You know, and it's not about playing uh, a game of pretense. It's not about being in denial about right. something. That's a great point. Yeah, I mean, when you have joy, you, of all people, can look absolutely in the face of the worst, of whatever your reality is. And right. there's a lot of bleakness, and right. there's a lot of darkness, and, and loss, and sadness, and grief. And I entered into that grief. But I did not ever let go either of the joy that was there. And so um, that, that's one practical way mm -hmm. to, to come to understand it. Look at everything that's good. Make a list if, that, if you're a list maker oh, of the things that are good in my life. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that will sort of slowly turn your attention from all that's so overwhelming and sad to, okay, there is this good thing today. You yes. know, maybe it's something as simple as, I had a really good strawberry muffin this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what it right. is, uh, but it's something that's good in your life. And then spend time savoring that because we're, we can just not even taste the good things if we're so full of what's, what's wrong right. in our eyes, and so full of what isn't what we Working. wanted. Yeah. And, uh, and so savor the good things. Yeah, so it sounds like a lot of intentionality, Indeed. especially when you're dealing with something hard, is that you've got to be really intentional yes. to find the joy. I was even thinking it, um, if you even, maybe you don't know what those things are to write down, you may have to ask the Lord. You may have to ask a friend. Yes. Like, I, all I can see is what's not happening. I don't see anything good. And okay. I, my guess would be somebody who's close to you yes. could probably help you do that and say, well, you know, your other kids are thriving. Uh -huh. You know, there's things really going well over here. Or mm -hmm. your mother was sick and now she's better and mm -hmm. your parents are alive. And, you know, there's there Indeed. are so many things, but sometimes it is hard to see. But yes. I think that's why community is good, too, to say... I'm Absolutely. today, I was great yesterday, but today I'm struggling yes. and I need, I need some, uh -huh. you know, some help finding that joy. Yes. Oh, that's such a, that's such a true thing, Cheryl, because, uh, one of the things that even with this sad, uh, episode that we went through for all those years, that, uh, since that time, especially, I mean, we've been so, uh, well, all through it, we were very open and so to be able to say, yes, it doesn't matter how many good things are in, in your life and how perfect you may appear to someone else. Of course you have grief. Right. Of course you have failure. Of course you have those things that are uh, really getting to you. And so, yes, having a community that knows and understands is absolutely wonderful. In fact, I remember a day, it was about something else, but I had been trying to help someone. It was very, very down, uh, sad, and, and deep day. And I called my good friend and said, I'm coming over right now because I have got to laugh with somebody oh, about something. Oh, what a great something. idea. And she said, come on. Yes. And we laughed. So I encourage anyone to do that on a day when you oh. really feel... Uh, weighted and burdened, whether it's for yourself or someone else, somebody in your life that you know you can laugh with, right. you call them up and say, I need you right now. Yeah. <laughs> so let's laugh a little bit. Yeah. And that helps. I think sometimes we feel like life just happens to us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of a relationship with Jesus Yes, is that we truly have more options yes. and more power than we realize. Yes. Some yes. of it, like you said, is 
um, going to scripture and reading truth over ourselves Mm -hmm. or, you know, praying or even community. But I think, um, that really is one of the beautiful things about the Lord is that he gives us, I think, more options um, Indeed. maybe than what we're aware of. Indeed. Oh, yes. You know, there's a, a verse that a lot of people know from Scripture, from Nehemiah, because I see it in calligraphy and other things. And, and it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay. And uh, that is the truth. That is absolutely the truth. And so for anyone... Uh, who is struggling, that would be my first suggestion, is just, even if you don't know Jesus uh, before, right? you know, take it up now, because this is the thing that he will give you. He will give you an awareness. He will give you uh, this joy that is going to make you strong. And right. that I've seen played out in our in my own life and in the life of many others. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's so beautiful. Um, any other tips on calling forth joy that, that you can think of from your, your studies or maybe from your life? I think it, uh, just as quickly as it, you can do it, when there is fresh grief, mm-hmm. um, you need to just spend some time thinking about it yeah. and understanding it. And <clears throat> seeing that this is something that has come into your life, but this is not your life. This is not you. Oh, good. And and talk to Jesus about that. And maybe I'm uh, really successful at doing that, and maybe a half an hour later I have to go through that again. Right. Because it comes back on me in fresh ways. Yes. And so I would just say, don't say to yourself, I'm no good at this. I can't deal with it. I might as well give up. But just say, no, here again, the, uh, Jesus is, is, is wanting me to get the joy again here. Right. And Jesus is going to help me do this. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to think about it and I'm going to ask him to do right. that for me. Because we can very easily <laughs> um, try to ignore it. Indeed. Or we try to numb it out or we try to decide that maybe it looks different than we think. But mm-hmm. like you said, the Lord's given us emotions for a reason. Indeed. And we do sometimes just have to sit in them and yes. be sad Yes. Um, and feel those so that we can move through them. You know, even yes. forgiveness, part of it is um, understanding and admitting that they truly did hurt you. Yes. Not just saying, I forgive them, I need to move on. Yes, yes. You have to sit yes. in that. That's this right. was a hard thing that I had to go mm-hmm. through or what somebody has done mm-hmm. to you and um, managing, well, maybe not managing, right? Not trying to put it all in yeah. a pretty little box and just sit in the sadness of, this is not what I thought was supposed to happen. I wasn't supposed to have a son yes. that became an alcoholic or yes. whatever. So yeah, that's um, I like that. I'd also think too, and then if you you're trying to take control over that and you're not letting it define you, mm-hmm. because we do get caught up in and well, <clears throat> I'm, oh, yes. I'm the one that has an out. This is you know this defines right. everything about me, and it yes. it doesn't. You were still. You know, a Bible teacher and a wife and a mom to two other kids that needed you. Mm-hmm. And praise God that the Lord was showing you that you were more than this situation so that it didn't try to box you in and you almost become that, you know? Indeed, indeed. It is easy to let the world make you <clears throat> believe that that is uh, your identifying reality. When right. In reality, it's not at all. It's just one aspect of yeah. what your life is. And so... Uh, that really is uh, liberating to right. come to that. Yeah. And no matter how many times it, you need to go back again and do it, do it again. Because right. that freedom is precious and uh-huh. it is going to make you strong. Yeah. That's- I like that. And I think, too, this, this getting a new perspective is not like always something real magical. It takes a little effort. It does. Right? And at times that I can't find it, I will have to ask the Lord to say, yes. I don't see anything good. I'm struggling. Yes. And again, you have people around you, but sometimes I would just have to pray and say, God, can you show me what else is going on? Can you show me how you are moving in this situation? Because I am needing some hope and joy and a fresh perspective that I can't seem to get mm-hmm. on my own. And he's mm-hmm. always so faithful to do that for us, you Indeed. know, he loves us, and and um, and I think it's natural that for us to get caught up in hard things, but realizing that there's so much more going on in the world, God has great big plans for us <laughs> and our families, 
And sometimes we have to ask him, can you show me, you know, give me a bigger picture of what's happening because I, all I see is this and it's not good, Indeed. you know. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's, it's really a, a wonder then to see what Jesus can do with the very thing that was the most painful because right. we are continually able to help people now who have someone in their family that's struggling with uh, either drugs or alcohol. And uh, our son's life is devoted to that now. And oh, so wow, okay. I could never have imagined that yeah. when I was in the middle of it. Sure. But that's okay. Yeah. The Lord just dealt with me and, and what I could imagine and what I could deal with. And uh, it, it made me strong so that now I can, I can do that. Right. And uh, I, that I never dreamed I would be doing. And, uh, and that this kind of like joy. Yeah. Once you say, okay, I'm a person that was intended to have joy, right. and I'm going to do this, everything looks different when yes. you look at it through the lens of joy. Oh, and you hate for people to miss out. Indeed. On Indeed. All of that. Wow. Yes. Well, will you um, maybe just bless our listeners with joy or kind oh, of yes. pray over them or whatever yes. you feel? Yeah. Thank oh, you. I'd love to do that. I would just say, Lord, there are so many people who are walking in a time of real sadness right now. Yes. There is bleakness and hopelessness that they feel, mm -hmm. and there's loss. And um, there are so many things that are not the way we expected them to be or the way we want them to be, even the way you want them to be, too. And so I ask right now, Lord, yes. that you send the blessing of yes. joy on Thank each of those. Would you remind each of us of all the things that are so good, even in a life that's full of tears? There are so many things that are good. Send the joy of hope. Send the joy of peace. Send the joy of love. Send the joy of expectation of a better day. Mm -hmm. And send the joy of, Lord, right now, I am going to rejoice in you. I know you want to do that for all of us. And I just ask you to do that in great abundance right mm. now. I thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lana. Thank you, dear. You're so beautiful.